I think it's going well. I mean, it's really a luxury to walk off a train and be 10 minutes from your hotel. It does feel a bit like a slightly dysfunctional family. <laughs> I mean, you would definitely roll if he was telling you to roll. I don't know what my better side is. I always forget. <laughs> I learned to Vogue last night, so. <laughs> Please start doing that when I'm waffling. Okay, I'll do my serious face. What do I miss? God, I miss my kids, my wife, my coffee machine. Um, probably sleep. I really miss my own bed. Um, but tours are sort of time limited, so actually I don't tend to focus on what I'm missing because you're exploring new stuff, so it's good. So travelling by train this week's been great because it was much easier to book a cello seat on a train. Not too bad for me, it's just, just put it on your back and go as long as you remember to go with it. Getting your base places can be a nightmare. Doors drive me nuts. As far as I'm concerned, if I could have automatic doors following me around my entire life with the base, that would be brilliant. Um, but actually, from a point of view of touring, recently it's been great because we're hiring instruments, so I feel like a total princess. A borrowed base, but from a very nice luthier called Harry, and has described it as having a heavy bottom. my contact lenses because <laughs> I hate being on tour with my glasses. I would never travel without my lavender oil uh, or actually at the moment my arnica oil <laughs> uh, because if you get muscle pain on tour it's just the worst thing and so at the moment I've got arnica oil with me which just put on shoulders and works a treat. Yeah. Um... I mean, I used to bring like neck pillows to travel with, but now I'm tired because I'm a mum, so I just sleep wherever and whenever. <laughs> I love trains. I love trains. Yes. Whenever we do travel, um, we try and either minimise the impact um, environmentally or that we maximise the impact it has on, on the audience so that it's, it's really, really worth it in the end. I think there's a lot of our players and a lot of my colleagues in the office who care a lot about um, being more sustainable. Well, I am very proud to be part of an organisation that is trying to make sustainability uh, really high in the agenda and, um, you know, to find new ways to to do that. Being able to go out on the road on tour and watch performances happen across the, across the globe, you see the kind of shared struggle um, in terms of what the arts are grappling with just now. So whether that's about audiences coming back, whether it's about budgets and how to be most efficient, whether it's about sustainability and how we can keep being global and keep being really connected while also dealing with the climate crisis. But this is video, so you need to do something a bit more dynamic. Uh, I don't know. I think everyone's pretty on it. Like, and Stu's got doubles of everything, so if any of us did forget anything, it wouldn't be a problem. Andy, Andy Berridge, um, I think he's left quite a few things, including on this tour. I think he left his iPad at home. Do you know, I never used to forget things on tour, but as time's gone on, it's kind of becoming me. Do you know that Andy forgot his iPad? <laughs> well, that's good, you know. <laughs> but you won't forget it next time. <laughs> anyway, yeah, Andy Berridge, for sure, for sure. I think everyone has said that. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe Naomi. Although Cheryl left a violin on a bus in China once. I mean, that's quite up there. 
I've watched a couple of our violinists like put their hands to their face as a train's pulled out of a station when they realise they've left their instrument on it. Yeah, this is just me like hanging out, hanging out at the canals. I need some bread for the ducks or something like that, don't I? Tour downtime is usually uh, go on Google Maps, find where you are, zoom out and find the nearest thing that's an expanse of green and go there. Because I think just we always only have small windows on the road and the quickest way to get a feel for a place I find is just to kind of saunter and see where, see where the map takes you uh, and just get a feel for what the city's like on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, normally I would probably take myself out for a walk. I really like finding coffee roasteries wherever I go or like really nice coffee shops and um, you know just take my book and sit in a place kind of try and absorb the feel of different cities. Kate Southers who plays with us uh, she's a real foodie so she's always on the lookout for somewhere nice to eat. I mean Andy Berry is quite up there with encouraging people to stay out way past their bedtime and have a few too many Negronis. Uh, yes, it basically involves makeup. Uh, I find that gets me into the zone. The boys are all like doing their concertos. Uh, I tune my bass, I do do that. But I also quite like to just have a nice quiet time of doing my makeup, which sounds ridiculous, but it's quite meditative and it gets me in the right frame of mind. Yeah, um, I like to eat something, uh, otherwise I feel a bit on, on edge. <laughs> I don't like to like do a lot of kind of chatting before a concert. So yeah, I think getting into the zone, it's something that we all do in, in our own ways. One of the things with this show is that the kind of way we build a piece, the way we rehearse on the day, the way we warm up for performances has taken influences from the dance collaborators and the music collaborators. And we both have to kind of learn how to make the best show, both longer term over the process of creating it and every time we hit a new venue. I, I don't have any pre-performance rituals or anything, I just need to eat. What do you like to eat? Anything. Like, I just, I can't play on an empty stomach, but I really enjoy, actually, Japanese food. No, I think, God, it's just, I guess the sort of repetition and the practice, it almost feels like every day when you get to sort of 7, 7.30, there's a little bit of adrenaline available anyway, and the routine feels so familiar that actually it happens almost without thinking, I guess. I do enjoy touring. It's uh, a chance to sort of hang out with everybody in a slightly more relaxed way and see different places. I mean, it's just always exciting. It's always interesting. It can be it's really tiring and challenging and sometimes you miss home. I get to see all the work come to life um, on stage. And also I think touring's about meeting different types of audiences, which is what makes what we do. So. Uh, interesting and varied. It's really fun. You get to know people in a way that isn't possible at home because everyone's in the same situation and so you you muck in and um, support each other and you know try new things together. It's great. We can connect with an audience any in any part of the world doing the same thing. It's cool. You know there's a collective attitude um, of a sense of fun uh, but really having a lot of artistic integrity about it. Like ultimately, I think seeing the work that we create in front of a different audience is one of the reasons I do the job. And I think seeing the reactions in different places around the world reinforces why and what you might make at home. Did yeah. a wee dance. <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> Don't talk about it. For other people. And <laughs>